investing is all about common sense uh it's about starting early it's about staying rational it's about understanding the markets it's about um you know seeing a cycle it's about just you know like investing in what you understand rather than investing out of fomo but today's gen z's uh, and millennials they believe in living right they are the yolo generation uh and you know yolo coupled with fomo so yeah they want to spend rather than you know think about what's going to happen 20 years down the line if you look at china us brazil i think a very similar trend will play out in india a typical image of a fund manager is someone with gray hair analyzing reams of data to find the next big stock opportunity in today's episode of mint money talks we have with us a very special guest who is among the youngest fund managers in the mutual fund industry hi priyanka welcome to the latest episode of mint money talks so priyanka first off can you tell us about your investment journey how did you start and how did you get interested in investing So I have been um you know talking to my father about investing ever since I was a child and I made my first investment in the stock market uh in the cap goods industry when I was right about in college I was a commerce student and I was always intrigued with numbers learned balance sheets at a very early age uh and there my father uh, you know suggested that I should start looking at the stock markets make my first investment uh, obviously that did not go as planned for me uh but uh you know after i completed my ca i was evaluating options about what do i really want to do in life and i landed up with this opportunity in icic prudential mutual fund which was initially in the finance team and i was really excited about you know learning about the mutual fund industry the markets uh i was very lucky uh to have been spotted by my cfo and cio for an opportunity in the investment team uh and that's where my journey uh started as a research analyst uh it's almost been a decade with the company um and about eight and a half years in the markets and uh i have been managing you know like a domestic mutual fund since the last two years uh, along with narin so yeah it's been an exciting journey uh and uh you know what were your initial learnings when you started and exactly which year did you make your first investment and what were your learnings from that uh so my first investment was in the year 2011 it uh, like i said was a cap good company uh and while i understood balance sheets i did not appreciate the fact that i did not really understand cycles back then um so um uh, and how know, old you were around this i was about 19 years old okay. yes yeah okay. so uh yeah my first investment gave me like great learnings but i i think over a period of time what i've realized is that investing is all about common sense uh it's about starting early it's about staying rational it's about understanding the markets it's about um you know seeing a cycle it's about just you know like investing in what you understand rather than investing out of fomo right, right. so uh you know just staying invested for the long term the value of compounding makes you enough money over a period of time right. was and uh, and you know back in icic how many funds are you managing right now which are these funds so uh, i manage and co-manage like together about four funds one is bharat consumption fund which is a thematic consumption fund uh transportation and logistics which is a thematic transportation theme which includes autos logistics aviation etc the third fund is export and services where i'm co-managing with my other fund managers which is a theme on export as well as services and the other is a sectoral fund called fmcg right so more broad uh based uh understanding of consumption uh with export and services right so priyanka as a young fund manager who manages a lot of these consumption oriented funds what are some of the macro trends that you have you know picked up on gen z and millennials and can you give some examples how you have implemented these strategies in your own funds so when you uh, look at the consumers of today versus say our parents uh the gen z is in millennials uh belong to an era of relative abundance rather than uh, you know our parents who belong to the era of scarcity and by they focused on their needs and savings over uh, the need for spending but today's gen z's uh, and millennials they believe in living right they are the yolo generation uh and 
you know you look coupled with fomo so yeah they want to spend rather than you know think about what's going to happen 20 years down the line uh so you know the whole social media rage they need to uh you know uh, be cool in front of their peers have a social media presence uh, makes them want to uh, you know look good feel good live better and so they spend on themselves right so i think that that as these consumers come into the working age population in entirety right the gen z's we will see a very rapid growth in discretionary consumption right because these people like going out they like eating out of home food uh, they like buying branded apparel footwear uh, they like going out for movies they want to consume content on the phone and on netflix and other otts right so uh, i think we are seeing an, a, a structural uptick in the discretionary consumption in the country and that's one of the big themes that has also played out in countries where per capita consumption has sorry per capita incomes have risen over a period of time so if you look at china us brazil i think a very similar trend will play out in india yeah. uh, and accordingly you know there are themes that are emerging out of it where uh, you know a lot of stocks we've invested in right, right, right. you feel that a lot of these opportunities are in the unlisted space and also do you look out for ipos uh, in that sense uh so if you were to do a relative comparison of pe's in india versus globally you'll realize that the kind of valuations that the indian uh, investors are happy to give to a lot of these growing companies uh we're seeing a lot of companies getting listed uh in the indian stock markets uh and uh you know we honestly like say 5 7 years back when i was a research analyst we did have a term called tina there is no alternative right we, you, we had very limited options and we had to choose between them about where to invest but i don't think we're facing that challenge in the indian stock markets today right right uh, and you know uh, like you mentioned that uh, you know a lot of millennials and gen z have uh, you know a lot of these habits when it comes to spending you low fomo uh, you know now as a young fund manager yourself you know a lot of uh, these behavioral biases might also uh, you know could possibly impact you and we all know investing is all about managing one's behavioral biases so how do you watch out for these <laughs> uh luckily i'm blessed uh, to be working under uh, my seniors who've seen cycles right? narain anish a lot of my other seniors have been in the markets for years and the one thing that they have taught us is respecting valuations and respecting margin of safety because we are managing public money uh so while uh, you know i have not seen the kind of cycles that they have in 2000 or 2007 eight but i have seen enough events and how the market reacts to different cycles uh we've seen gsc we've seen demonetization we've seen the 2017 18 markets we've seen 2020 covid pandemic markets we've seen the way the markets are being in the bullish trend in the last 4 5 wow. years so uh you know just they just calm my behavioral biases down let's right. just say that right uh sure and uh, you know can you share some of your learnings also uh from you know these events that you have seen uh see whether it's the uh you know covid pandemic situation uh, or you know 2018 2019 and those periods what have been your learnings uh from that and how you have taken that forward in your investment approach so you know when these events had happened obviously you know the whole market was coming down like say the 2020 pandemic and it was very difficult to assess where is the market heading next right so there is obviously uh, a a feeling of fear about you know where are we heading from here uh but you know these uh these drawdowns also give you an opportunity to buy some really good businesses at really good valuations and when you just uh you know take uh, a look at you know where are we heading from the next 3 to 5 year perspective i think uh, it just helps analyze uh you know opportunities uh that could and you know companies that could em- emerge stronger out of uh, out of these situations so uh you know honestly the learning is to just put your head down think about where the cycle could pan out from a 3 to 5 year perspective what are the changes in consumer behaviors that is happening because of these uh because of these uh changes like if i were to give you a simple example when the pandemic happened uh people stopped going out of their houses right but there was a need to watch content so everyone switched to their phones they switched to ott to watch content uh 
because they had the eyeballs the otts were actually giving out a lot of money to the producers to get the content right so there was a trend that was playing out that the multiplexes were not expected to do well to the customers were with the ott now we're seeing a reversal of that trend as the consumers are moving out as they're going as they feel like you know spending more time out of home we're seeing the cycle reverse and you know those are the kind of learnings that come out from these events Sure, sure. And Priyanka, uh, also in your funds, if I'm correct, you also have some exposure to international investment. So, and a lot of these, uh, you know, are consumption oriented. As that's what you look at. So, how do you go about investing in those international companies? Uh, so we have a lot of sophisticated research from a lot of global houses uh, who keep us updated about what's happening in the global markets. Uh, and you know there are value dis- displacements uh, that are visible in a lot of these stocks. So for example, I have the Setoral Fund where we have the option to invest globally, and we can see that the valuations of a lot of these global stocks are a lot more reasonable than what is available in the Indian markets. And within those companies, right, because Uh, if you see a lot of what we consume in india is actually global and when we see those companies available at very attractive valuations we are tempted to you know evaluate and assess whether you know those could be good investment ideas um, for our funds and can they like give returns higher than what is available in the indian market so it's just opportunistic in nature uh, okay. and when you know the relative valuation looks reasonable in context of the growth is where we get tempted to invest in those ideas which which is this fund where you can take international uh, it's uh, i say it's a prudential fnc fund okay sure uh, and uh, yeah priyanka you know a lot of our uh, you know millennial gen z investors uh, you know uh, whether we like it or not uh, you know take a lot of their financial advice from instagram from facebook from twitter and uh, also end up investing some of them end up investing in uh, you know riskier uh, asset classes like futures and options which may or may not be suitable for them uh, so what would be your advice to the young investors how they should go about uh, building up their finances and you know how they should look at financial planning you know the beauty of the markets in the last few years has been that you know uh, most of the stocks have done really well and there have been a few small caps where people have made phenomenal money so uh, because a lot of the younger investors have not seen cycles they feel that this will continue forever uh in fact i have had friends who come up to me and say that uh, you know there's a famous hera feri dialogue of uh, tell me stock ideas where ikis din mein paisa double <laughs> right so but markets don't really operate that way yeah. uh we see, we are in a phase where markets are doing healthy because the economy is fine um but you never really know when the tide turns right so i would strongly urge the young investors to contain their fomo uh if they start early if they invest long enough if they are consistent and disciplined in their, in their investment approach uh, i'm sure they'll create great wealth in the indian markets because we are very well placed from uh, you know an economy perspective we are poised to do very well over the long term but uh you know you can uh you know take those bets that make you happy with some part of your portfolio but you know in the end your needs are very different from someone else's needs right you might not be able to afford the drawdown that may happen in the market at some day god forbid that someone else might be in a better position to take that risk right so do what uh, you do you right right and do what makes you sleep in the night peacefully mm-hmm. rather than looking at someone else and feeling that you know i also want to make quick money and get rich soon so And on that note, thanks a lot, Priyanka, for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. That was all from today's episode. For more such interesting content, keep watching Mint.